I'm going to start with two short poems, recent poems. This will be the first place uh, I will read them. And I'm always thrilled to be back at Chatter. This one is called Preface. 1936. I hurried as always, but was late. Eight centuries or 10,000 years, my small story fixed to my back. Food came weighed and wrapped, shelter and gorged, surplus. My own, my own, my own was a mantra I could sing in any season. I could be who I was and also anyone else. I was late and also much too early. I came to justice before its time, unprepared to receive me its rough grasp, hurt my hand, embedded its promises in my flesh. Juggling gender, I was early and also late. Juggling children, service, my explosion of words on stone, parchment, or floating cyber cloud. Only poetry and love met me where we laughed. After so many false starts, they came in whole and sure before the finish line. My hand fit the ancient print, a radius of living settled on my shoulders. I am lunar standstill now, calendar of hope. It is 2013, and I discover I am perfectly on time. Soon I will disappear together with all my kind, and the earth with its synchronized clock will wake some green-blue morning, <clears throat> its rhythms safe at last neither early nor late, but breathing in harmony. And, <laughs> this one is called Shame. In the four regions of my heart, the tower's mad collapse <clears throat> once again gives birth to languages undecipherable for those who grew up with city heat, took refuge on rusted schoolyard swings or down shakes at the corner candy store. We were who we were, and every purposeful turn toward poetry's invitation of tongues meant opening a book we might not have opened or braving the trade winds threatening to pull my major muscle from familiar comfort. Tricuspid risks, tonalities that sound beyond my ear. Pulmonic takes an absent breath and runs a marathon of awkward legs. Mitral shelters mystery, aortic pumps new blood. The trapeze artist almost misses her partner's flying wrists, but grabs and holds. In the stands, a wave of fearful thrill recedes, leaving a beach disabled by death's overdraw. We close our eyes against images we know will never leave us in blind peace. Travel arteries like highways crushing fear beneath our feet. A single word unleashes waterfalls. In dreams we pull up hard before the windswept precipice. Explore what poetry is made of when we've lived longer than we have left to live. And every word counts twice. Shame is the cunning adversary, language our salvation on the rise. Thank you. And I'm going to end with a poem from this book, Ruins, 
um, published a few years here in Albuquerque. It's called Cursive Writing and Old Slide Rules. <laughs> this will probably only be familiar to those of a certain age in this audience. <laughs> One day I will walk in a graveyard where cursive writing and old slide rules sleep beneath dead leaves and rain-soaked earth. Elaine's chortling laugh, one phrase from a Brandenburg concerto that once lifted my heart above cacophony of noise. Sweet anonymous streets shielding our human register from touch. I may stop to pay tribute to crinolines and cashmere sweater sets, <laughs> egg beaters, rotary phones, transistor radios and old typewriters, their red and black ribbons floating spirals over moss-covered stones on misty nights. I may recall an IBM Selectric the raised letters of its tired steel ball glistening in the light of a waning moon. A permanently signaling left arm thrusts from the window of a 1941 Ford, its upholstery smelling faintly of burnt plush. A 78 RPM record spins beneath the diamond tip of a tiny needle recreating Patsy Cline's familiar sound in my astonished ears. Daughters of the American Revolution refuse Constitution Hall to Marian Anderson's perfect voice, and Eleanor Roosevelt makes it right by inviting her to sing before Lincoln's imposing figure, where 75,000 black and white Hold her offended voice. Weekly newsreels at the RKO, Superman vanquishing Khrushchev, Walkmans, their earplugs deafening an era, the joy of cooking, first edition, <laughs> and casseroles topped with thick slices of Velveeta cheese. <laughs> Carnation corsages dyed two-tone pink, to match a strapless prom gown lost to memory. Where will I find one reason to nourish the hope that tomorrow's graveyards may imprison darker relics, dangerous even in their afterlife? All those advertising claims, the lies of those we love who love us back, our hatred of children and this grim currency of violence. Where will we bury greed, erase our fear of women and difference, trust ourselves, design a final resting place for war? Dare I hope, noise, camouflaged as ideas, dogma, or commanding truth, will one day fail to greet me as I rise each morning and make my stumbling way through digital possibility, clutch the mohawk, two-wheeler, faint oil skin of that first royal portable, or your green rayon dress mother with its white rope pattern, still so comforting to my young and trusting cheek. Thank you.